Hey, it is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we are on location here at a commercial pool and we're going to go up over chemical automation. Uh, originally the company that developed it was a company called Accutrol. They were purchased by Pentair. Pentair then moved it into the residential world and is now called IntelliCam. But the basis of this is all on commercial pools. So we are going to do the first part of this as a commercial pool, give you the idea of where it all started and how it all works. And then we'll do a second part and describe to you how it's now migrated into the residential world. Okay, here we go. We are in a commercial pump room here and we have the top of the line AK600. This is capable of managing three different bodies of water. In this particular equipment room, we only have two bodies of water. We have the waiting pool for the kids, which is controlled by this flow cell. And then we have the main pool, or the lap pool, whatever you want to call it, um, which is controlled by this flow cell. So a few of the basics here is you have to have water feeding in from your pump. So that would come into um, the input here. You have shutoff valves and the importance of having these shutoff valves is because there is a filter here that you are going to have to unscrew and clean. Little screen in here, you pull that out, rinse it out with water, make sure everything's clear and then put it back on. And that's to prevent the debris from getting into this flow cell. So I have two sensors. I have a chlorine sensor and I have a pH sensor. The water comes into this flow cell, the sensors read that water, the water goes through a little flow sensor and there's a float here that has to come to the top and touch with this, it's magnetic. And then once it touches with this, there will be a green flow light and that flow light will tell you that it's okay for the chemical pumps or the, the salt system to be turned on. Without that flow light on, it will not turn on the chlorine pump, the acid pump, or a salt system. It is imperative that you have flow, because of course if you didn't have flow and you kept dumping chemicals into it, eventually it would back up into the pool, and then you would overcharge the pool once the pumps got turned back on or there was actually flow. So you've got your flow cell, You've got a screen here that you need to be cleaned. You've got your sensors. You've got your flow indicator. Um, and that all feeds back through a bunch of wires into your, in this case, AK600. Your main body of water has the same thing. You have a flow cell. You have your screen that has to get cleaned. The valves are here to shut the, the water off so that you can remove this. You've got your chlorine sensor. Your pH sensor, your chlorine pump, your acid pump, and then we also have a salt system on this pool over here. Some additional items, this one actually has what's called the AK color for the waiting pool and the AK color for the main pool. This actually gives you a DPD reading. So like you do with your test kit, it's going to say it is three parts per million, four parts per million, five parts per million, whatever this reads. Then this, the chlorine sensor, is an ORP sensor. It actually determines the conductivity of the water. And based on that conductivity, it, depend, it determines what the chlorine is. So it's a relationship. So I can use ORP to determine my chlorine level, but it is not directly related to DPD. So you will have to have your DPD readings and then correlate it to your ORP reading. You will set your ORP set point based on your DPD readings. The ORP will change based on a lot of different parameters. It will change on temperature, it will change if your salt level changes, it will change for calcium level, cyanuric acid will cause it to change, TDSs will cause it to change, 
if your pH and your alkalinity are out of whack, that will also cause it to change. So it is very subject to imperfections in the water and changes in the water. So in order for the ORP to work correctly, the pool must be balanced and stay balanced. If, if different items change in it, you will have to readjust your set point for your ORP. You never, ever, ever change the sensitivity of the ORP sensor. You always change the set point. Conversely, you have a pH probe. The pH probe is pretty stable. Um, it, it will cause problems if your alkalinity is out of whack, but as long as you keep your alkalinity steady, uh, your pH probe will accurately read. In this case, when you find that your pH, your actual pH, does not correlate with the pH that's being read by the sensor, you would adjust the sensor, not your set point for your pH. In a commercial system in North Carolina, they prefer, in many counties, it's required that if you have a salt system that you have a backup chlorine supply. So this particular unit is set up so that predominantly it will chlorinate the pool using a salt system. That is a level or a sensitivity that I've set based on the ORP sensor. Once it falls below a certain ORP, then the chlorine pump will kick in. The way that I have it set up on this is my preference is to have a chlorine of five. Once I drop below a chlorine of three, I then turn on my chlorine pump to maintain a safe level in the pool. This is a unit that it all started with, which was an Accutrol AK-110. It has been now migrated to the Intellichem commercial. But initially, um, what made this so different than everybody else was it had something called proportional feed, and it had wait times. And the reason why that's really important is, of course, you've got your pumps, and if you keep pumping chlorine, pumping chlorine until the level that your sensor reads, um, it says, oh, okay, then you have actually put too much chlorine in the pool. And even worse with the acid, because acid takes uh, time to react in the water. So you keep pumping acid, keep pumping acid, and by the time that that actually comes around and is going to trigger your probe, you wind up having a very, very low pH. So what this controller did was, based on the volume of water of the pool, it would have wait times. So you would turn on your, say, your chlorine pump for a certain amount of time, and then you would wait, and you'd see what happens. Same thing with the acid. You would turn the pump on for a certain amount of time, and then you would wait and that way you don't overfeed the chlorine into the pool or you don't overfeed the acid into the pool. The proportional feed comes into effect that as you get closer and closer to your set point, your on time becomes reduced and so you have less pumping into the pool so that you don't overshoot your, your goal or undershoot your goal. So same concept as you saw in the AK-110. You've got your feed line. This feed line goes back to where the pump goes in. I highly recommend that you plumb it in with one of these mini valves at that particular point. It comes up here. You have this mini valve to shut off for convenience. Again, you would turn that off to release the pressure. You would hit your your actual drain on your flow cell and that would allow you to easily take off your screen, clean that screen and put it back on. It's very important to keep this clean. This filters the water going in to the flow cell. Of course, if you don't, you get a lot of gunk in here 
and it could potentially block your flow sensor from coming up or it may cause it to stay stuck so that when you don't have flow that the flow light goes off and that would allow the pumps to run when there's actually no flow. That is a very bad situation. The other thing, I so this comes from our pump and then the return is the last thing before it goes into the pool. Again, where the where the return goes into the pipe, you're going to want to use one of these mini valves. If any of this equipment should break, the hose should break, um, one of these feed tubes should break, uh, develop a leak, you have an easy fix at that point if you have the mini valves on your pipes to isolate this off so that you can continue to run your pool. So very, very important. One of the things you'll notice is also that the acid pump and the chlorine pump feed into the return tube and even more important is you'll notice that the acid comes in before the chlorine. Why is that? The chlorine is of course very high pH and therefore the high pH could cause the calcium to drop out of the water and it will actually clog the tube because of the calcium buildup. When you feed the acid in it, the acid, of course, removes the calcium deposits, so it keeps it clear. So always have your acid feed before your chlorine feed. This is a much safer way to inject the chlorine and acid into the pool as opposed to have separate ports that are tapped into the pipe because, again, if this pipe particularly breaks, if this tube breaks, then you would be draining the pool. So this is more of a commercial setup. You don't really see that in the residential world. But if you are going to install the IntelliCam in your residential pool, I would highly recommend that you go out and you get commercial fittings and you get commercial grade hose in order to set that whole thing up. Another feature with this chemical controller is that these pumps are mutually exclusive or you can make them mutually exclusive. Of course, if you pump chlorine and acid at the same time, you effectively get chlorine gas and they kind of fight each other. So you don't want the acid pump turning on when the chlorine pump is on and the chlorine pump turning on when the acid pump is on. So this was the first controller that made those mutually exclusive. You could technically take off that mutually exclusiveness and set it up so that they could both run simultaneously. And if you're working with a salt system, you will probably want to do that with the salt system, but never with a chlorine pump. Okay, so I want to explain the lines here. The first line you'll see is dedicated to pH. Here is my actual pH, which in this case is 7.41. And then I have my off, which would display off when the pump is off, on when the pump is on, and mix when the pump is waiting. I then have my set point over here. So the concept is with pH, I'm feeding in acid. So I, my actual should always be close or below my set point. If it isn't, I probably ran out of acid or the pump's not working, something's going wrong. My next line on this is ORP. ORP stands for Oxidation Reduction Potential. And that is a relationship that you have to set up to your DPD reading for chlorine. So this would be my actual, this is my set point my actual should always be equal to or higher than my set point. This oxidation reduction potential will change based on the alkalinity changes, the pH changes, cyanuric acid changes, water temperature changes, so this set point is always going to have to be adjusted up and down probably almost on a weekly basis to accurately get your chlorine level correct. So you would never, 
ever, ever change the sensitivity of the probe, you would always change your actual set point. Conversely, with the pH, you are actually going to change the reading on the pH probe, not change the actual set point for your pH. In this particular controller, we have a heater, so I, ha I can use my third relay to actually control my heater. That third relay could be programmed to be uh, another chlorine setting, quite a few different items. This is the basis for what the IntelliChem is set up to do. Because it's rather complicated to figure out how many gallons is in the pool and how long the pump time should be on and off, Pentair has simplified it and when we get into that section of the IntelliChem you will see that you will actually select gallons of pool and it will automatically set your on times, your off times, and your proportional feed percentages. Okay, here we are. This is a residential setup. Here we have the IntelliChem. And uh, it looks very familiar to the way that the commercial is set up. Um, we did not set this system up. And the first thing that I noticed out of it is this is actually in the wrong spot because in order to clean this screen that's in here, I'm gonna to have to go shut the pump off. So this needs to be reversed, and this valve needs to be here in order to clean the screen without having to shut the pump off. But as you notice, you still have your ORP probe and your pH probe. That will come over here, it's gonna get measured by this, and then this is going to go ahead and it's going to turn on a couple things. One is it's going to turn on our salt system. Two is I'm going to turn on a chemical feeder for the acid, and that is right here. So this is my chemical feeder for my acid, and what I would do is I open this up, and I'm going to pour my acid into, into this, and then this will actually feed the acid into the pool. So ideally, you should be putting sulfuric acid in here, although sulfuric acid is difficult to get, and so a lot of times people just put muratic. The problem with that is muratic will bring down your alkalinity a lot faster than your pH versus the Sulfuric acid will bring your pH down a lot faster than your muratic. So that's the advantage of that. And that pump is turned on by this controller when it sees that the pH has dropped below its set limit. When the ORP drops below its set limit, then it will turn on my chlorine system or my salt cell. That concludes our video on chemical automation and the IntelliChem product. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it and found it educational, please drop us a like. Please sign up for our YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.